So you're ready to turn that passion into a proper food business and you want to be sure that your product is going to leap off of the shelf or off of your farmer's market booth and into your customers' hands so that you can increase your sales and start a profitable food business. For the best packaged food advice, subscribe to this channel below by clicking the button and also click on the bell to be notified when I release a new video all about starting a profitable packaged food business. You make something amazing, it's delicious, everybody tells you how much they want you to go into business so that they can buy it from you. But you are wondering if you really have what it takes to stand out above the competition and to really grow your sales and be profitable. Watch this video to the end to get my reasons why it is so important to do this part of your business and to stand out as unique. And I'm going to also give you eight ideas on ways that you can do that so that you practically jump off the shelf into your customers' hands. I'm Sari Kimball. I'm the founder and creator of Food Business Success. And I have helped hundreds of food business entrepreneurs start their business, start it from just an idea or very early on, and I also help them grow their business into a regional or national brand. Comment below and tell me what kind of food business you're thinking about starting or that you've already started. I love to learn about all the delicious ideas that people are doing out there. Let's say you have make an amazing salsa and of course all your friends and family tell you to turn this into a business. So you go ahead and start that process. And if you haven't checked out some of my other videos, I have tons of video resources on all the licenses you need and the different kind of food businesses. So check those out on this channel, Food Business Success. Okay, so back to the salsa. So here's the problem. There are hundreds of salsas out there and literally I could go to my farmer's market and there's probably three people making salsa and on my grocery store shelves, there's probably 15 different brands, not to mention all of the different varieties that I can choose from on the shelf. As consumers, we are faced with decision fatigue. We are overwhelmed by making decisions. And so we tend to just take whatever is comfortable, the brand that we recognize, the brand that we know and love. Or we also shop on price, right? Now as a small food business brand, there is no way you're gonna be able to compete on price. So if you can't compete on price, which I guarantee you will not be able to as a small food business, how can you stand out at a farmer's market and on grocery store shelves and as something that people are actually going to choose and put into their cart. It is absolutely imperative that you set yourself apart as what I call defensively unique. You might also hear a term called USP or unique selling position. But this is basically how you are going to stand out as something really unique and special to your customers and to new customers and really help your product uh, get into their hands and they are excited to buy what you are making. So I'm gonna give you eight ideas on how you can create a combination, uh, your magic formula of how you're going to stand out as defensively unique. So the first one is in your name. So you have an opportunity um, to create a name that sticks out for people, right? That is something that kind of surprises them. So keeping with my salsa example, uh, we actually had, uh, we have a, a salsa company that its original name was White Girl Salsa. Now she actually ended up having to change the name to Winking Girl Salsa, which is what it is now. Um, but it's something that stands out, right? When you see that name, it's kind of funny. And you're like, huh? Like, it just makes you stop and, and kind of have a little question in your head. 
So you can have a lot of fun, especially if your product is something that everybody has, it's kind of a staple. What are ways that you could stand out with your particular product name? Another idea is in your ingredients. So this could be a couple of different things. It could be that maybe you source like local ingredients for your salsa. Um, it could be that those ingredients that come from that area have a certain terroir about them. So um, if you get uh, Anaheim chilies, for example, right? Those, um, maybe they're not local to you, but there's a certain, um, you know, hatch green chilies, something like that, that has a certain cachet of where it's actually grown. Uh, it could also be the uh, ingredients that you're using inside the salsa. So maybe you're adding some, uh, a unique ingredient that's not normally found in salsa, like, you know, when people started doing pineapple or mango, um, or it could be the way that you combine those ingredients. So there's a couple of different ways you could massage ingredients um, to help make up this, uh, your, your recipe for being defensively unique. Packaging is another big one. Um, we know that because you cannot compete on price, if you're on an online grocery store shelf um, or on a traditional grocery store shelf, um, that packaging is very eye-catching. It's going to be the first thing that people see when they see your product. And so is there a unique kind of packaging that you could use? Um, so that, and, and just the way that it's, you know, formulated, is there something that could really, that that packaging could really help, um, you know, make people curious to pick that up and, and put that into their hands. Um, and then going along with that is your labels. So your labels and packaging obviously kind of go together, but, um, you know, is there, are there ways that you can uh, do your label again, it, you know, whether that's through colors or unique packaging to really have that stand out. I will uh, caution you that you do have to be careful with your labels because there are certain things that have to be on there. So you need to have the name Salsa on there. Uh, you can't call this something else. So I highly encourage you to watch the video I did uh, at, on this YouTube channel all about labels and packaging. So go check that out after you finish watching this one. Okay, so that was the first four. Uh, so we have your name, your ingredients, your packaging, and your label. Other things that will help you uh, be defensively unique are certification. So maybe you want to be uh, organic or non-GMO or certified gluten-free, um, or you want to be paleo approved or Whole30 approved. There's a lot of different, uh, both uh, kind of legal, um, agency certified certifications, and then there's also things that you can put on there, like gluten-free if it doesn't contain any gluten, that you can kind of create your own certification around. So certifications are, are a way to help reach your target customer, somebody who's interested in that, um, and, and to set yourself apart from the competition. Um, you are a part of your brand and a part of your product and you are, of course, absolutely defensively unique. And so, uh, to some extent, a lot of times food brands, especially early on and in farmer's market situations, uh, are gonna rely on you as the founder and creator to be part of that recipe of being defensively unique. So it could be the way that you, um, you know, sample your product at the market, you could wear a crazy outfit, you could, um, light things on fire, you could, um, you could also have a lot of connections, right? I mean, a lot of times this, you start this based on your friends and family and who you know. And so people, you know, getting the word out and that word of mouth. So that's really based on you and your connections. Um, experiences is what I, I'm going to put as my number seven idea. Um, we know that especially millennial uh, generations, really, really value experiences. So uh, a couple of examples of that would be, um, do you give, maybe you wanna give back a certain percentage of your profits to a charitable organization. That is um, creating more value in your product for the consumer than just 
I'm buying this salsa and using it, right? We're creating more of an experience where they feel good because you're giving something back. Um, Dirty Lemon is a great example of a product that is only available online right now, um, but really built up this experience um, model around social media and like you text them to place your order. I mean, it's a completely different model. It kind of turns all of the, the food brand models on their head. So um, what kind of experience could you create with your customer when they engage with your, your product? I've also seen, uh, like this kind of goes back to labels, but it's also an experience, um, some products that the labels come off and they turn into other things, like masks for kids or something. So um, maybe there's some ways that you can create some unique experiences with your product. And then lastly, it's kind of a broad category, but it's what I would call brand identity. So. We touched on it a little bit with the name as well, but your identity, if I was to meet your, your food brand on the street or at a cocktail party, uh, who would I be meeting? Would they be light and playful and funny? Would they be a little more serious and sophisticated? Like, What kind of interaction would I have with your brand? And you really want to play off of that. So your brand actually has four pieces to it. It has your values um, as a company and as a brand. It has your visuals, so that's your logo, your fonts, your colors. It has a voice, um, so how do you speak to people? What kind of language do you use? And then it also has that personality piece. So consider those pieces of your brand identity as you are creating um, your product and this will really help you to set yourself apart uh, from your competition when we're staring at a wall of salsas or whatever product you are making. So what other questions do you have for me? I want to do a video, a future video about your target customer and making sure that your brand and target customer do align. So watch for that, um, subscribe to this channel and comment below, let me know what questions you have or tell me what kind of uh, business you are starting. Hey, and while you're here, since you're thinking about starting a food business or maybe you already did start it, uh, be sure to grab my 10 mistakes PDF. It's the 10 mistakes that I see food brands make and I give you tips on how to avoid them. This is priceless. So. Be sure to click on the link below and get that delivered straight to your inbox. Also, if you want to join a community of like-minded food business entrepreneurs and get the answers you need quickly when starting your food business from an expert, check out my monthly coaching membership option at foodbizsuccess.com. You get two live Q&A calls with me a month and access to my private Facebook, as well as a monthly resource that will really help you. And of course, if you like this video, please hit the like button below, subscribe, comment, go to foodbizsuccess.com and check out what I offer over there to help you start a profitable food business.